Hi friends! I hope everyone's doing super dandy today because for today's video we're gonna be doing another prom dress challenge where I try to make a prom dress in 24 hours. If you guys watched my last one, you guys know that I am not going to prom anytime soon or ever. I'm just here as an adult wanting to make a prom dress because I thrifted this really pretty fabric and I just think it'd be perfect as a prom dress. But that's really my only main reason for doing this is that I find fabric at the thrift store and I just imagine it as a pretty prom dress and decide to make one. I actually have a design already. It is actually one of the designs that did not make the cut for my wedding dress. Here it is. I still think she's really pretty and she was a close, you know, tie for second. But, you know, if you watch my wedding dress video of me making my wedding dress, this is not the dress I made. So, instead of letting her go to waste, I thought, hey, let's try to make one of my wedding dress designs that did not make it. First step, we need to get Manny out over here and we need to make a pattern. So this is Manny. Manny, meet everyone here. All three people watching the video. And Manny is slightly smaller than me, so I typically make my garments a little bit bigger than her, or I do like an adjustable back like the design we're doing today. So it fits me perfect. So I'm just going to tape her up. So I'm just going to tape up my design on here on her left chest. Here we go. This is going to take a minute, so I'll be right back. So here she is. I did add an extra, you know, seam here just because I'm going to have one piece here, one piece here, and then the back. This is our last piece. So three pieces for the top here, and then this middle section right here. This is just going to be like, you know, crisscross straps. So you can like tighten it and loosen it. You know, just in case you like, you know, go into a nice dinner and you know you're gonna be eating a lot, then you can like make it bigger. It's very practical. I have my fabric here that I am going to do my draping with. So, here we go. So we're gonna make this real snappy because it is morning time and I'm just really craving a bowl of Lucky Charms right now. So I gotta do these voiceovers quickly and then have my lucky charms. But pretty much all I'm doing is just molding this fabric onto my mani right here. And then once I get it, I just trace it and then I cut them out and then I just put it back on, you know, just to make sure I cut out the right shape. And I just did that for the three pieces that I taped out. And there we go. This is what it looks like. Bam, bam, chicken turkey. So this is what the pattern pieces look like now. Got our three pieces for the top bodice. So now I'm just going to put this onto a nice piece of paper and I'm gonna add seam allowance because we need seam allowance. And then cut it out on the fabric. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom skirt part. I don't really like making patterns for that because one, it wastes a lot of paper and two, it just takes a long time. So I just like to drape it and then cut it and then sew it that way. It's faster. I'm also playing Animal Crossing. Can you hear this? I don't know where the, the volume is on this switch thing, but I'm doing this. But um, what am I doing on the screen? Okay, for here, all I'm doing is just tracing those pieces I made on my mani. And then once I have them traced, I just marked out my seam allowance that I wanted for the whole thing. And then we cut them out and that's how I got my pattern pieces. Ta-da! So it's one o'clock now, so that means it's soup time. It's hot. But I have my pattern pieces all done for the bodice here, so, you know, after I'm done my soup, I'll cut them out, and I'm also gonna watch um, a little show on YouTube, and um, it's about the worst mid-air collision in aviation history. So pretty much two planes collided. In the air. So my soup is all done. So now I, I gotta get back to this because we're, we're running out of time. Today I am using my candles I made a while ago that I'm gonna be giving as Christmas presents. You guys can get creative and you know use whatever you want. You can actually use actual weights but if I were you I use candles, I use plants, I use 
heavy things, you know, just all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. I'm back again and I turned off my Animal Crossing for this one so I'll kind of explain a little bit but there's really not much to explain here. I'm just cutting up my pattern pieces with my weights aka my candles and then I'm doing the exact same thing for my lining fabric because we need you know the outside fabric and our lining fabric and one of my pieces I'm cutting in the fold. Yeah that's about it. So I have all my pieces here of my outside fabric or my fabric, I don't know what you call it. And then my liner here, which I also thrifted this. Pretty close, it's gonna look pretty good. Now that I have everything cut out, I'm gonna just sew them all together. So I'm just gonna sew a nice big flap here so they, you know, they all connect. So I'm gonna start with like the curvy boob piece here and get that sewn to the center piece right here. And um, hopefully it works out. That's what I'm banking on because this is my draft. I'm not doing any drafts with this dress, nor do I really ever, uh, I think I did a draft for my wedding dress just for the top, but typically I, I don't like to just because it's like, meh, it just takes too much time. It fits. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what they look like. I swear, every single time I'm making one of these dresses, it always turns out like lingerie to start with. Like this definitely could be like a nice Christmas Santa, you know, lingerie set. But it's not, it's a prom dress. So let's not get caught up that it looks like lingerie right now. By the end of it, hopefully it doesn't look like lingerie because I, I don't think anybody wears lingerie dresses to prom. I don't think so. So for my bodice here, I have a few options. One option is I can put cups in it, which would be nice. Or two, I could put some boning in it. And um, unfortunately they're not red, so this would kind of, you know, show a little bit and this would kind of show a little bit. So I'm leaning towards the boning, even though these, these little cups here, I thrifted them, they're brand new, they're brand new in the package, but I thrifted them. And I have never had a cup fit my boobs so well. It's perfect, like these were made for me. So I might just hold on to them, you know, for the perfect occasion when I need to make the most perfect dress and might hold on to these bad boys. So I think we're gonna do some boning for this one. So I need to cut four pieces because I'm doing one per each seam. So before I can sew this in, I need to curve the edges because otherwise you, you don't want it poking your boob, that would kind of hurt. So just like to do that a little bit on each side and then make it a little bit shorter. So there's a little bit of excess fabric of this ch channel maybe it's called, I don't know. I curve it like this. So I just had like a little bit of a brain fart um, with my first piece of boning I sewed in. Um, I would, yeah. let me just show you. This is the first one I sewed in. You can see it's not straight at all. And then here's the second one. Perfect. Magnificent. And the only difference was the first one I tried to sew in, I left the plastic boning inside, you know, our, our cover here, which, Jenna, why you make it so hard on yourself? Just take it out, sew the, you know, our cover thing, channel, I don't know what it's called and then put the plastic back in before you close it up. I just love doing things the hard way. It's, sometimes it's so exciting and challenging. Bam, bam, turkey chicken. The boning is sewed in, so now we can finally put the front piece to the lining. So I got a little excited and I pinned up the bodice on my mani back, back there and it just looks so good so I got even more excited and I pinned up the skirt to see what the dress would look like and um... Doesn't that look amazing? Doesn't she look so amazing like this?
You guys saw in my original sketch, I did have like a little ruffle going up the skirt and now that I have it pinned like this, I'm thinking of not doing that just because the fabric already has a lot of textured in it and I kind of moshed it up where I kind of, you know, pulled it up and ruffled it like this and it was just too much. It was too much with this fabric so I think we're going to keep it simple and just finish it off like this. The skirt piece is almost a perfect square. Look at that. So I just realized I didn't have enough um, lining fabric to do the skirt exactly how I was going to do the skirt for the outside fabric. So I'm just trying to ruffle up the fabric I do have and see if it will look stupid if I have less fabric for the lining than, um, you know, the outside. Wow, I pinned that really badly. Like what, 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 was, what was I doing? So I just had a granola bar, so I feel like that's gonna hold me over because I'm, I'm getting pretty hungry towards dinner and it's only four o'clock. So I just had a granola bar. So I should be good for about half hour. It's four o'clock, so I'm trying to get to five o'clock before I have dinner, but we'll see if we make it. So both skirts here have the ruching. They also have an extra few stitches on there just to keep it in place so nothing moves. So now that, you know, we got two pieces. I'm gonna sew them together at the top here so then I can do like a little flipperoo. This goes over and then, you know, it's clean. So watch this. We see it all, you know, not very nice, the edges. No more puffy edges! As I'm pressing all of these seams here, I am like really tempted to make this strapless and just make it like this and then have some nice, you know, ties at the back to have that together, but I feel like this would be really cute strapless. I never had a strapless dress before, so this could be a first. So I just got a little lazy and um, I kind of just quit on ironing this bottom skirt. It's it's too puffy and it's, it's difficult to iron because it's polyester and my iron's broken. It only has one setting and it's hot, really hot, like cotton hot. So I also don't feel like pinning it. I'd rather just seam rip it if I mess up. So hopefully I don't mess up. I'm back. This is what the inside of the dress looks like. And then the outside. I just folded the seam upwards in there and then I'm just gonna do a top stitch and then the dress will be in one piece if this goes smoothly. I hope it goes smoothly because I don't feel like seam ripping. So I have her pinned on my Manny back here, so this is the first little preview of it actually kind of looking like a dress. Like it's actually, you know, a dress. I'm really happy with her. She's looking great so far. I am excited to finish her tomorrow. I'm too tired right now. I can't finish her. The last little strip here was definitely below average for me. Like my best work is not done at nighttime, so so I'm gonna go have dinner. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. <sighs> so last night I went to Walmart and um, they did me pretty dirty because they had pretty much every single color of zippers, but they only had one color of invisible zippers and they only had white, so I had to get another white invisible zipper. So, um, hopefully I can sew that in really well so we don't see the zipper, but um, other things we gotta do today, other than just sewing in a zipper, we need to do some straps, which we all know I'm terrible at making little tiny straps. So I feel like we should do that first and struggle a little bit more this morning. 
and then finish the dress. So I'm gonna cut a few rows of these straps just because I need ones that go from here to my back and then I also need some crisscrossy for the middle of the back and then I also need some like loop-de-loops so I can like, you know, crisscross the back. So for each strap here, I'm just gonna fold it in half and do a straight stitch down the side there. And I'm also gonna try a new method because since the last time I did skinny straps like this, there has been a lot of different suggestions on how to turn skinny straps around. So I'm gonna try one of those methods because my methods are not working. So for turning these straps, I'm gonna try this bobby pin method where you pretty much just do like a little snip at the end. Like that. And then you're supposed to like hook the bobby pin through here. Like that, okay. And then you're supposed to just like, you know, push the bobby pin all the way through. And then that's supposed to turn the strap. Apparently. Apparently this is supposed to, oh, it's working. Look at this. What the heck? This is so much better than a strap turner. That is the first time ever I've turned a strap easily and successfully the first try. I have myself a beautiful strap. Ta -da! So after putting the two straps here, I decided instead of finishing the straps, I really need just to put the zipper in. No particular reason, I just feel like the zipper needs to be in before I can finish the straps. Just so then I can try it on, I can see where I want to put the straps and position them correctly. Just a little update, um, I'm starting to get a little angry because my invisible zipper foot is just being really mean to me today. It's just, it's, it's not nice. It's not nice. I've tried to sew the zipper in like four times and it keeps sewing on the actual teeth. So then you can't close the zipper. <sighs> Moment of truth, does it zip up? Because it, it doesn't. Da -da 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 -da. It zips up. Now it has a white one, which I didn't think about. I was like, oh, I could just use white, and then you won't see it if I sew it correctly, but it still has a white zipper, so technically I could paint it with, like, nail polish or something. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's, you know, pretty, pretty bad. So I'm just going to hand sew this liner over top of the zipper so it makes it look nice and pretty in here, and it's nice and clean, so. B -O -B. I just have one thing to say. This is the best interior zipper ever. It's definitely the best one I've ever done and I'm pretty sure this might be the best one in the world now. I'm pretty sure. Like it's so good, I just wanna cut this out of the dress, throw the dress away and frame it. Not the outside of the zipper, the inside. Just, just take a second and really, really look at this. Not at the top here, but just this. My life is set. My life is set knowing that I made the best interior zipper in the world. I need to call Guinness World Record and tell them where is my plaque or ask them where my plaque is because it's official. So for my loops where the straps are gonna kinda like intertwine, you know, I just took the, you know, spare straps over there and I just cut them into like little, little baby straps here. And I'm just gonna loop them inside the dress like this and then, woohoo. Now I just gotta figure out where I wanna wear this. Is it acceptable to wear a dress like this to a wedding? 
I've always just worn like more basic ones, but maybe I could wear this one to a wedding. That'd be cute. Hi friends. So I was just gonna hem it, but I needed to try it on first to, you know, see the length I wanted. Hi. And then I put it on and then I realized, hey, maybe I don't know what shoes I want to wear for when I wear it. Like maybe I'm gonna wear it to a wedding. So I'm deciding, making the executive decision that future Jenna Benson. So I'm gonna show you guys the final reveal of the dress now, but it's not hemmed, but it's done. It's done. I'm so excited to show you guys. Ta-da! Well, here it is. Here is my prom dress that I probably will wear to a wedding. Maybe, not sure. I still gotta think about it and see if it's actually appropriate, right? I think it's fine, right? Cause it can still be like a prom dress, but this could also be like a fancy summer dress. Maybe not. I'm not really sure. I'm gonna decide on that, but I need to find a place to wear it somewhere because I really do like this one. I really do like you. My favorite thing about this dress is definitely the cut of the top. Like I am just so happy with this like low cut right here, like. But it turned out way better than I thought it was gonna turn out or way better than my imagination of like what I was trying to design, like. I love when that happens, when it's just so much better than your original plan. Yeah, it doesn't show my butt crack when I sit down either. So, it's great. This dress, this dress is great, isn't it, Benson? But here she is up close. Hoot toot. And the back. She's so cute, I love her. Okay, well, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed me making a prom dress in 24 hours. That was a fun challenge. I like doing this 24 hour, you know, dress challenge because then it doesn't go on for like 50 days because technically I could take a long time to make the exact same dress just because I'm a perfectionist and I just want to go bam, 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 bam and make everything perfect. But reality is it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be done and looking, you know, pretty decent. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want me to do more challenges where I try to make something stupid in 24 hours, comment down below what I should do next. That's it. So I'm going to go now. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.